Welcome back to our aquaponic system build. Today we're going to go over the build of our radio flow settler. These videos are brought to you in part by our Patreon supporters. Our top supporters are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Now that the fish tank is all built, we have an outlet here that will then run into our radio flow separator. A lot of people call these a radio flow filter, but technically it's a separator because the uh, solids uh, drop out of the solution instead of uh, going through uh, a filtration membrane or something like that. So it's really um, suspended solids just drop down to the bottom of this tank. You'll notice that this tank is uh, taller than the fish tank and obviously we're not going to pump up and fill this. Um, I'm going to cut this tank uh, down below this water line essentially and it will only really be filled uh, this far with water. Uh, when I ordered these I wasn't exactly sure what the dimensions uh, specs online weren't all that great so I wanted to make sure I got one that was tall enough um, to maximize my space instead of just buying something that was way too short. So that's why uh, this is so tall and we're just going to sacrifice the top of it. By doing that I probably spent you know another twenty or thirty dollars per tank um, but for me it was worth the investment to uh, not take the chance of getting a tank that was uh, too small. This tank also isn't uh, like what most tanks that you find it actually has a um, full drain outlet on the bottom meaning that there's no shelf um, where the uh, outlet hole is at the bottom. A lot of uh, tanks including the one that I currently have in the dome uh, comes down with its cone shape has a little shelf and then the uh, fitting goes on so all the solids come down and it actually sits on that shelf. Uh, with these full drain tanks any solids that go down there's no place for it to set and it will then um, be able to uh, go out the outlet on the bottom much much easier. Um, this tank, it's not quite a 60 degree angle, I think it was 55 degrees, which was close enough, but really it was the only tank that I could uh, find and have uh, custom manufactured in the blue like this. So that's enough rambling about that. Let's get started, start chopping this thing apart and making a settler out of it. I'm going to mark this at about the 95 gallon mark. Try to get a nice straight cut around it. I also wanted to add that this is sort of a experimental filter that I'm playing with as are most of my things so if you're trying to reproduce what I'm doing buyer beware it'll probably work just fine but I'm not always one to do everything exactly by the rules I think what I might do is save this top, clean it up a little bit, and I could use it as a lid uh, for this if I decide to put a cover on it. Normally a drain out of the bottom of this would just have like a two inch fitting with a valve so you could drain out the setup. I'm going to go from a two inch down to a one inch and that's going to head off over to the inline mineralization tank. It's also fairly important to uh, make sure that out of the bottom of these tanks that you put these um, hose clamps on because the plastic in the tank's a little bit soft and with the expansion contraction or heat they can um, soften up and the fittings can get loose and start leaking so it's a good idea to put this basically as a strap to help uh, contain all that. I'll tighten that up once I get this adjusted into its uh, proper location.
while I'm installing the radio flow settler I'm also doing the inline mineralization tank at the same time even though I'm not showing it on video I'll do this as a separate video plus I'm also rough plumbing in the main line where all the uh, water is going to be flowing out of the uh, tank and these other tanks so it doesn't always match what's on plan so I want to make sure that in this really tight area that all the uh, different fittings that I have will fit into place and this is just sort of blocked up on some cement blocks and that this has a slight slope to it which it does and I just want to make sure everything fits because once uh, you start cutting these things it's uh, they can get really expensive having to make corrections. The water leaving the settler will flow over this V-notched weir. Instead of trying to fabricate one by cutting and welding sheets of plastic, I thought it would be an interesting experiment to make one with 3D printed parts. My printer bed can print parts up to 12 inches, so the weir is cut into 9 sections and has a key slot that will interlock the parts together. I'm using a two-part fiberglass resin to bond the pieces together. It's thick enough to fill in any gaps that would be in the joints. Once the resin sets up, I'll paint the entire assembly with an enamel paint which will seal up the printed parts. We'll let this set for a few hours and it will be ready for the enamel. So now my weir is all set. One of the problems that I knew was going to come up with this is that these tanks aren't uh, perfectly round. So part of this setup is I made up this gasket out of a closed cell foam and that will slide onto here and go around the perimeter and then it will compress in against the uh, side of the tank and I just set this in up near the top of the tank so we can see down into the edge here how the tank has a lot of spacing between the weir and the tank wall some areas is a good size gap here is a, a good spot where it goes in this is where the gallon markers are on the side of the tank they indented that unfortunately with putting in that gasket, it should make it much, uh, much better seal in here. One of the nice things about this weir, instead of it having it be built into the side of the tank where they use an, an external tray to catch the water, having this inside and just with the gasket, I can level it out to make sure I have a nice uniform uh, area where the water will overflow this. And like if it's in the tank, you have to make sure that the tank is perfectly level. So I can be a little bit sloppier with the tank install and then uh, fine tune this weir to, to fit in its place. So I'm just going to fill it up a little bit until it gets to its overflow point and then um, just sort of push it into place. Actually, very close. Just needs a little adjustment. Now that that weir is in, we can set the center tube to use to settle out the heavier solids. And we'll 
install our line from the fish tank. I also made this diverter plate up. Most of these systems you'll usually see the pipe coming in lower and then flowing up and overflowing like this. Um, but I wanted to not have the solid settle on this and so I made up this funky little plate that basically slides into the bottom of this so as the water comes out it will diffuse it and take some of that energy out of the water and let it settle into uh, this column without uh, creating too many ripples. Uh, it's very experimental but uh, I think it should work out fine. And that's uh, all the parts for this thing. So I think we'll fire it up and, and see what it does. We have the water coming in, coming out, hitting against this diffuser plate, which is working pretty well. And it heads down through the water column, down to the bottom, and the solids will settle out in the cone. And then it overflows this weir. As the outlet it heads off into the rest of the system. Just a quick update on the tank. It's been running really well so far. This little diverter that I put in is running great. You can see it's all covered in some algae now, but overall it's been doing really well. Inside the tank, the solids have been settling out fairly nicely it's a little bit accumulating on the bottom and to keep that under control there's actually a one small koi that's in here and he just sort of swims around and helps knock things down I find that to be much more effective than having to try to brush this out every couple of days to get the solids out and just keeping a koi in there swimming around uh, does a really good job the overflow weir is covered in some bio slime, a little bit of algae growing in there, so I'm definitely going to add a cover to this just to help shade it a little bit, especially when summer comes around. It'll really start growing in here. But overall, this uh, overflow is working nicely. Thanks for watching. Next time we're going to go over the inline mineralization tank. It's been running for a few months now without any major problems, and I'm looking forward to showing you how that's working.